Hello everybody, this is Budridge. Check this out. Time. 10 seconds. Difficulty. Hardest. So, uh, in this video I will show you one thing that uh, really uh, annoys me uh, and how I have fixed it. Look, I made a the touch typing uh, bash thing. Pressing escape, reload, pressing escape, reload. Difficulty adds uh, special characters, pure bash, pure fun. Whatever, this is not what this video is about. Uh, this video is about this. Check this out. Uh, so I was reading this, um, or I tried to read an article here on CSS tricks, uh, which is this uh, uh, web dev, soy dev, design, blog thing. Lots of articles about, yeah, of course, about CSS uh, stuff, you know, but also like design, uh, stuff in general sometimes interesting sometimes waste of time but look at this design uh, uh, centric blog here look at the beautiful font we, which we are presented with here uh, this is uh, I'm not sure uh, if this is something that started recently or if it's related to uh, me using Vivaldi now because I actually tried this uh, uh, before starting uh, recording this video I tried opening this page in Pale Moon and it didn't it, it didn't have this uh, font here and the font it displays here that is uh, yeah let's break this down I, I prepared it a bit here so I have the developer tools here open so we can inspect like this paragraph here and here we can see uh, the font family uh, rule here which is uh, where you define what yeah uh, how your fonts are uh, which fonts to use on the web page they have defined that in in the html so the, these fonts apply to to the whole uh, page you do this by specifying the the attribute font family and then a list of preferred fonts here and the first item in the list Sentinel SSMA. I don't have that installed. I will get back to why I don't have this installed on my system. And uh, if that isn't installed, then then uh, the browser will try the next item in the list, which is another Sentinel font here, not installed either. Then it will continue in the list. And here we can see the the nasty thing here is System UI. It will default to this System UI, and this is a special font or a special name here me, uh, meaning of course it will use the system UI font and my system UI font let's open a, a GUI application here is fixed sys uh, and fixed sys is a really stupid font to use for this uh, because uh, it, it only works in one font size uh, and it doesn't work uh, with uh, in italics it looks terrible and it looks even worse if you try to make it bold um, so it only works in one font, font size no it, italics no bold text or whatever and I have a, a, a little uh, font config rule here set up for uh, to, to force this font to never be displayed uh, in, in uh, other uh, sizes than normal and I also force the font size here with some rules to always displays uh, in, in the font size that works uh, which is in size it's 11 and in pixel size it's 16 I'm not really sure how this works this was like a trial and error thing to get this working but it have, have been working fine for me for a long time and, and GTK and QT applications and whatever they follow these font config rules and I don't have any problems with the font rendering of this uh, font and I use it because it's the smallest you can see you know I use this everywhere I have it here I have it here because it's so small it's the smallest font that I can read uh, that's why I use this uh, and it has become like uh, I have used it for so long, so I, it feels weird not having this as as like the UI font like this. But um, it's only for this like 
not super important uh, texts, you know, because uh, the text that I'm focused on, like when I'm writing a program or whatever, then I want a much larger, more readable uh, font. And also in the terminal, I prefer a different font if, if I can, but sometimes I have a small font there as well, but whatever. But when I'm reading an article, I really don't want this fixed sys, even if it would uh, have the correct font size and the correct uh, 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 not being bold or italic, it's still not a good font for reading long text, you know. Um, and I don't know why they set system UI as the fallback. They could have, I think they have it deeper in the list here, sans serif, then it would set my preferred sans serif font uh, that you can set in, in your browser settings. All browsers uh, have, have something like this, so you can, uh, if we search here for font, you can set what, what you prefer as your sans serif and serif font and monospace font and whatever. I, I usually do this, or I, I always do this. Uh, but for some reason, they fall back instead to the system UI instead of the uh, browser default fonts. And that uh, makes uh, a lot of websites. And, and this, as I said, I, I'm not sure if it's a Chrome thing or it's, if it's um, like a new design uh, choice thing. Um, because I think it might actually be like a designer uh, uh, logic thing, you know. Uh, because it's uh, it's like a trend to not uh, use web fonts as they are they are called uh, where you uh, Have special fonts that are downloaded either from from like a remote server like Google fonts or something or you ship a font with the site itself and fonts uh, no matter What really they are often they are quite a big chunk of uh, 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 data that you need to, to download somehow if, if it's not in your cache or installed or whatever and this uh, impacts of course uh, page load speeds and web developers have, have been a bit uh, obsessed with uh, decreasing the page loads and I think that's a, that's a great thing that's really good that they uh, don't uh, ship a bunch of custom uh, megabyte sized uh, fonts, you know, that no one cares about anyways. Uh, why not just set it to my preferred Noto or, or my preferred sans serif font or whatever. Uh, but they have of course gotten this wrong and starting to set it to the system UI font instead. As the fallback and then you get this this stuff here and it's not just CSS tricks, I see this all, all the time. So here's a little uh, way to fix that. I have uh, this guy open here. I prepared a, a stylus style sheet. Maybe we should do this. Let's let's delete this and, and write it from scratch instead so I can show you exactly how to do it. Well, there it reverted to that stupid font override. Let's delete that guy. There. Now it's stupid font there. Uh, and then we can close this window. I click the stylus extension button. And then we can select here, write styles for this uh, for CSS tricks. You can see I can select both this URL and then we get the, this specific page. But if we select just the domain, it will uh, add this style for this domain. Hopefully. Didn't really work. Write styles for this domain. Okay, whatever. This URL then. Huh. Now it's uh, weirding out a bit. Okay, whatever then. I, I don't know, maybe they don't work today, uh, clicking those. Um, if we click manage then, it will open the... the no, nothing works. Maybe it's because I've been fiddling around and maybe it's because developer tools is o are open, I don't know. Close this as well. Let's reload the page. There, now it worked. I, I don't know. I, I have been messing around here, writing style, creating styles and stuff here. But now we can see it creates here a style sheet for this domain here, domain Uh 
And then uh, we have to do this. We inspect this again because I close that window to get the name of, of the preferred font here that we don't have installed. Sentinel SSMA is the name of that font. We don't have that installed and we will never have that font installed. Uh, then we can add it here in the comment as a reference here. And then we use at font face um, curly braces and then font dash family colon and here the name of the font and that this is the name of the font I'm not sure if we need to put it in, in quotes like this do that and then you have to specify a source for this font so this is a way you can create your own font families if you're writing CSS for a website or whatever you can use this and I could just uh, make a font family called BudLab font and then I can have a specific source here and usually you use URL and then specify URL which can be either to a remote uh, uh, host like uh, um, Google fonts or it's uh, a, a link relative to the page or to the CSS uh, uh, file but you can also use local and then it will use a, a, a installed font for instance Nodo Sans ah, source colon save there, now it works now it uh, replaced here uh, whenever it finds this font family it will use this uh, font instead you can set set this to whatever you want i think maybe it's, uh, not a serif is even better for reading like this and you can see here my terminal here I, I don't know why this doesn't work because i actually want this font charter but it doesn't work for some reason charter bold that works then close charter the bold version i think this is a beautiful uh, uh, serif font but it doesn't load the regular uh, charter. I don't know what, what's going on here. It's like italic works as well. But the just charter doesn't work. I, I'm not sure what's going on. So I think I will use Noto Serif here. There. So either you do this. Uh, and then we can save this and now we can see this style sheet is active here uh, But the thing is every time you find a site uh, Where the font doesn't work like this then you have to create a new uh, site specific uh, uh, Style override like this uh, But we could also do this we could do URLs matching a regular expression And then the regular expression can be anything and then this style sheet will apply to all sites. Uh, the drawback with that is that yeah, it will apply this style sheet to all all sites. Uh, and this is not an advanced, complicated style sheet. You know, it will just look for this uh, Sentinel SSMA. If it doesn't exist on a site, it will not apply anything. But we can see here now on DuckDuckGo, for example, this uh, style sheet is uh, is uh, enabled here as well. Uh, at least the badge indicates that maybe I need to reload for it to show up in the list maybe I need to save for it to show up in the list well we got the badge there yeah now we can see this style here is active on this site and it doesn't matter if I uh, enable or di uh, disable it because it only applies this uh, font override uh, but I guess uh, these uh, user style overrides they they have a, a slight impact on uh, performance of course and the more style sheets you you uh, load custom style sheets you know that that can slow things down and here we're loading a completely uh, unnecessary style sheet override uh, to every site here so that's that's a big drawback of course and uh, 
the reason why you maybe don't want to, to make it for every site. But I think I will do that anyways for, for this thing here, because whenever I find a site now, I can just open and edit that I, I, that style. That uh, style will be available in this list for every site, and I can just open this here with edit and uh, find another font that I need to override. Let's also look at this, because I, I had to look up what this Sentinel SSMA font was, you know. Couldn't find it in the uh, Arch uh, repositories. Uh, it's a commercial font, it costs uh, $200 uh, if, if you want to use this font. Uh, so yeah, that's why I don't have it installed and I will never have that font installed, uh, I believe. Whatever, but uh, this looks better than this at least. Right, thank you for watching, have a great day, bye.